Welcome to this celebration of the birth of Jesus and of the very first people to hear that life-changing angelic message, come and see and then go and tell. Two brief announcements for you this evening. Just a reminder that during the candle lighting service, when the time comes, remember to always keep the lit candle upright and dip the unlit candle into the lit candle, okay? Keep the lit candle upright, dip the unlit candle. Something to keep in mind for later. We also greatly appreciate this beautiful poinsettia display. After the service, those of you who have ordered poinsettias and had them placed here are welcome to come and retrieve them, to take them home with you. There will be plastic sleeves available to put around them to protect them. Before you take them, make sure to see Donna Price. She will be stationed up here to help you with that process and make sure that everyone gets the appropriate poinsettias that they've ordered. We're glad you're here tonight. Let's take a moment to pray together as we begin. Lord, it's hard to imagine that in a cattle shed. It was a silent night. But we are grateful that you have promised to be where two or three are gathered, and we believe you're here tonight. Will you bless this gathering with the wonder of remembering how much you love us and how you long to use us to help others know of your love. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.
the book of Luke, chapter 2, starting in verse 8. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on, pe and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherd said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told.
special memories, and the making of new ones, a time for singing carols, for gifts, and for celebrations. But more than anything else, this is a time of great rejoicing, because Christ has come. As we gather to remember and celebrate his birth, we recall that which was declared long ago by the prophet Isaiah. To those living in darkness, a bright light now shines, a brilliant light shining over those who live in a land overshadowed by death. Upon them, a great light has shined. For so long the world has walked in darkness, ancient promise that God would send a Savior that joy would come to bring the morning sun and the light of the world is shining as all creation sings glory to God Oh, yeah. 
teeming with people. Caesar Augustus had ordered a census of the entire Roman world and everyone went to the town of their birth, their hometown to register. Joseph, a descendant of David, went to Bethlehem and while they were there with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him, was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born. Mary gave birth to her son, wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger because there was no guest room available at the inn. But this was no ordinary baby. He was the prophecy fulfilled, God incarnate, Light shattering the darkness, love on display. Yet in the hustle and bustle of busy Bethlehem, few would note.
above the Bethlehem sky, a star was shining, placed there by the hand of God to watch over what at first may have seemed like an ordinary night. But this was no ordinary star, and it certainly was no ordinary night. The star was there, lighting the way, it pointed to the place where Jesus lay with an urgency of message in its heavenly light, as if to say, pay attention, world, take notice, come and see your king is born, come, adore him, worship with us as we sing. Yeah. Uh -huh. 
on the outskirts of Bethlehem, <coughs> sleepy-eyed shepherds were keeping watch over their flocks. Can you see them? Just about to doze off when suddenly the sky erupted with glorious good news from the heralding angel. The shepherds were terrified, and the angel said unto them, Fear not. For behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger, and suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. When the angels left them, the shepherds ran to Bethlehem to find Mary, Joseph, and the infant Messiah. Once upon a starry, silent night, shepherds saw the glory of the Lord so bright, standing on the hillside so afraid, till they heard the host of heaven say, Come and see, God has done a wonderful thing. Come and see, come and see.
seeing Jesus, the shepherds left the stable, praising God, telling everyone what they had seen and heard. If you've been a witness of the goodness and love of God expressed in Jesus, how can you keep from talking about it? Just as the shepherds did, we tell the miracle of God incarnate in a manger. But now, 2,000 years later, we know that the baby of Bethlehem is the Christ of the cross. May we, like those who first heard the angel's announcement, come and behold our King, and then, in amazement, go tell the good news of the Savior. Who can fathom such a mystery? The God of all eternity, the one whose voice had thundered, let it be, would wrap himself in flesh. Who could know or ever understand the wonder of the Father's plan, the one who breathed the breath of life in men, was drawing him Shout the glory of his birth as shepherds make their way to be the first to witness God's own Son. See the virgin cradling her child, the bitter sadness in her smile. He holds him close, remembering all the while the reason he has come born to live Oh! <laughs>
it is. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. Unto us a child is born, and unto us a son is given. God with us, go and tell, Emmanuel has come from heaven. And his name will ever be the Prince of Peace, the wonderful Counselor. He's your great and mighty Lord, bow before
We are so glad that you have come to share this evening with us. We hope that simply by being here, you have experienced a real measure of the joy in the music and the words of the promise that God has come among us in a Bethlehem manger. I was reminded yesterday morning that on the night of Jesus' birth, that manger in which Mary laid her newly swaddled infant son was not sterile. A manger speaks of animal presence, animal sounds, and above all, animal odors. If you've lived in Lebanon County for a while, that's nothing unusual, but we don't tend to associate the manger scene with that scent. I think the wonder and miracle of that first Christmas would have smelled a little rough to most of us. Even today, the joy and the wonder of Christmas can have its rough patches. Painful memories, painful losses, 
disappointments. Even the simple fact that we are not as young as we used to be. All these things can take a toll after a while. And even the precious traditions we've grown up with that are so important to us at Christmas time, they change over time. This event has become something of a tradition for many of us. And it too has changed. We are glad to welcome new faces and new voices. But we've also had to grieve over faces and voices no longer with us. But our greatest hope is not in the absence of change. Our greatest hope is in the presence of Jesus. And so tonight, we invite you as well, now that you have come to see, go and tell. Let's prepare to celebrate tonight with the lighting of our Advent candles. Let's stand together. <clears throat> 